Hey folks, I'm Mark Ryan. This is Super Review, and this is, well, it's a dongle. This is the iFi IE Match Plus, and if you don't know what this is, it's a $50 thing that you add at the end of your earphone cable that ostensibly improves the quality of the sound in a number of different ways. So on iFi's website, they've got some pretty interesting claims about what the IE Match does. But there are basically three main things that I was interested in this thing for. So if you're like me, you're using sensitive IEMs with different audio sources, right? Maybe you're using it out of your desktop amp, out of your phone, or maybe even out of something like iFi's own hip DAC. There's a good chance that you've run into at least one of these three problems. And I'll start with, I think, the most common problem is that there are a lot of sources out there where if you're listening on a sensitive IEM, you're going to pick up a noise floor or a hiss. And that can be really annoying. And the iFi IE match claims to uh, resolve that. So we'll talk about that. A kind of related problem, and this one might be a little bit more esoteric, but if you're listening to a sensitive IEM, again, on a source that maybe was made for headphones, you probably don't have like full range access to the volume control. And the hip DAC is actually a pretty good example of that, where if I listen to this with sensitive IEMs, at minimum volume levels, it's already kind of too loud. And then there's channel imbalance, which is, it's just, it's just, you're mixing high power sources with sensitive IEMs. What do you do about it? Well, the IE match again claims to address that. And then the third problem that I'm interested in is even more particular, but it's to do with output impedance. And if that's a term that's new to you, I'm probably not gonna do a very good job of explaining it, but basically every source that you use, whether it's your phone, your amp, uh, the, the headphone jack on your, on your computer, they all have some sort of rated output impedance. It's a spec that you can read. And generally the lower, the better. But with sensitive IEMs, they're very particular about about that output impedance rating. And if you've got a high output impedance device, and I've got some here, this is an example of one, and you listen to the, a sensitive IEM on that, it's actually going to change the frequency response of the earphone. And I've got some pretty good demonstrations of that that we'll, that we'll go over in this video. But yeah, I wanted to check out the, the IE Match Plus, figure out, does it solve any of those three problems for me? Does it deliver on any of the claims that iFi makes because it's 50 bucks. It's definitely not cheap. Um, but if it can do all that for 50 bucks, maybe a pretty good argument for it. So like all my other videos, this is a live stream. If you're watching now live, hey, how's it going? Um, if you have any questions about the IE match that I don't get to in this review, please leave them in the live chat. And at the end of the review, we'll have a little back and forth conversation. We'll try to answer as many questions as possible. Although I will be perfectly honest, there's some claims that iFi makes about this thing, about the IE match that I didn't test. And what I was planning to do in this video is just kind of talk about, well, I guess we can go over some of those claims. Uh, they're interesting, uh, but also just kind of talk about maybe some of the in inherent downsides of using a device like this. Downside number one, you pay 50 bucks. Um, but then ultimately just kind of dive into, does it work? Does it solve those three problems that I had? And that's going to be this video. So I guess where we'll start now is I think just for funsies, let's jump over to iFi's website uh, and, and take a look at this. So this is iFi's website for the IE match, right? Here, here the, their kind of top level selling point is do your earphones suffer from pop and hiss? probably a thing that you have noticed if you've listened to a sensitive IEM on like a smartphone, because most smartphones don't have very quiet sources or very quiet headphone jacks, if they've got a headphone jack at all. Uh, but then if we dive down into this a little bit more, some of the claims are interesting. Like here they claim that it gives you better sound, uh, increased dynamic range, uh, reducing background hiss. That was kind of the, the top level claim. Um, that one, that one makes sense to me, but these increasing dynamic range, getting clearer vocals, and they even dive in a little bit more into detail here, suggesting that, let's see, where is that? Basically suggesting that um, when you're listening to your source at normal volume levels, you're losing two bits of audio. And I gotta be honest, I don't know how to claim, how to test that claim. And I don't want to say I'm dubious of that claim, but I, I, that was not why I was checking out the IE match. And if I'm perfectly honest, I can't validate that. I also can't invalidate that claim, but 
the other things I think are at least to me more important. So let's go to the table real quick and just do a quick overview of what comes inside the box here on the IE match, right? Here's the packaging, pretty simple packaging, nothing fancy. Uh, over here, you get a little carrying case, a little carrying bag, which I guess is a nice touch. You get an airline adapter. I imagine if you're listening to earphones on an airline, they're, I would guess their sources are pretty bad and probably pretty hissy. So that's a nice inclusion. And then the earplugs, I'm a little confused about, but there you go. Uh, and then you get the IE match itself. And so let's let's talk about the, the physical attributes of this thing, I guess. And, and I guess while we're here, we can talk about some of... I'll call them downsides of using a device like this. And it's just honestly that you're attaching a dongle. You're introducing a dongle into your chain. And this is a little bit inconvenient. Uh, you can see that physically this thing is a little bit bulky in kind of two different places. You have your L-shaped connector down here. And if you're uh, really keen eyed, you'll notice something interesting about it that we'll talk about later. You've got a switch that here toggles between balanced and SE, uh, single ended, which again, we'll talk about later. And then up here, you've got the, I think kind of the, the main unit with another switch that toggles between high and ultra sensitive support. Unfortunately, YouTube is telling me that our connection quality is not great again. That's not what I like to see. Let's see if we can get through this and see if YouTube recovers. YouTube, we can do it. All right. Um, so this is, I mean, that's the hardware. It's simple. This is not a complicated device. Um, so, but some of the downsides, all right, let's see. I talked about, you know, you have to pay 50 bucks for it. I think this thing adds a little bit of bulk to your whole setup, uh, especially if you're already working with another dongle, you're just kind of adding a bit of, a bit of a mess to your, to your connection. But then also um, this actually lowers the, the overall output of your source. So if you've got a headphone plugged into, let's say your smartphone and it doesn't get loud enough, this thing's actually gonna cut your maximum output by 12 to 24 decibels. And that's a lot. Now, if you're listening to a sensitive IEM, you probably still have plenty of headroom, but that is definitely worth consideration. So that's kind of, I mean, as much as I guess I can talk about the physical stuff, uh, as much as I can talk about the downsides, we might as well talk about does it work and how I tested this thing. So again, there were kind of three main claims that I was interested in testing. There was the noise floor, the audible hiss that you can pick up on some sources. There is a sensitivity of volume controls that I was interested in testing. And then there was finally the output impedance claims. And so the way that I tested that is, well, I used a bunch of different sources. So let me pull these things in. Um, here you go. All right. So what do we got here? So the iFi hip DAC, this is a, an external DAC amp that you can add to your phone that I did a, a review for a while ago. Um, this thing is actually really good for headphones, but I found that for, um, for, for sensitive IMs, it wasn't the best because there was a pretty audible hiss, pretty audible noise floor that could be picked up with an IEM like this, which is the MAGA OC K5. And this is kind of the, the main IEM that I was using for testing. If you had something like Campfire Andromeda, I think that would be an even stronger indicator of some of the problems of a source like the HipDAC. Um, over here, we have the Zeeshan Z2. This is a budget digital audio player that I mean, it's quirky in a lot of ways. We won't get into it too much, but one of the weird quirks about this is it has, I believe, 100 ohms of output impedance, which if I plug in a, a, an all balanced armature set like the MAGA OC here, it completely changes the frequency response. And I'll demonstrate that for you uh, in a second. And then I also had here, this is a, a, it's a GAD, but I believe this is basically also a Zeeshan player. It's actually got a tube amplifier in it. And these things are kind of fun to play with but they're just really not good with sensitive IEMs because again, this has a pretty high output impedance. It will change the frequency response as well. This has just a massive, massive noise floor that as soon as you turn the device on with these, these earphones in, you start hearing that hiss and it's pretty obnoxious. Actually, the other thing I wanted to mention too about the hip DAC, and I already talked about this a little bit in the intro, is that uh, this control dial or the volume dial, I love that it's an analog volume pot, um, but it has some channel imbalances at the minimum setting. And if anything above the minimum setting is kind of too loud for a sensitive IEM like this, and again, I think it would be even worse on something like 
uh, a, a campfire Andromeda. So basically, those are kind of these are the devices that uh, that show demonstrate the problems that I have uh, that I was interested in solving with a thing like the IE Match. Now, what I have over here, and this I don't think I ever pulled this into view. I think this rolled into view. But now this is an impedance adapter. So. By attaching this to um, you know your your chain, if I attach this to my phone, I'm effectively recreating you know uh, plugging this thing into a, a device that has high output impedance. This adds 75 ohms of impedance to the chain. What's interesting is that it seems like a lot of people will try to solve for things like the hiss in their noise or in their in their devices by using. Um, by using a, a, an impedance adapter like this. Now that's gonna have some positive effects. Like this can cut out the hiss, and this is a lot cheaper than something like the IE match. This can cut out the hiss on your sources, but um, there's gonna be kind of two main problems. One, you're gonna cut down your volume, which we already talked about. And then the other one, like we were talking about with the output impedance, is it's actually gonna change the frequency response of your, of your device, and that was I, that, that basically means like that this is not usable for solving the problems that I have with the K5. All right, so that is kind of the setup. Um, I'll just say right off the bat, noise floor. Uh, I think the i5 ma the IE match did a great job of solving that. Like plugging this thing into either the the hip DAC or even here, um, which again massive noise floor when I'm listening on the K5. The IE match completely cuts it out. In fact, I was pretty shocked at how effective it was. Um, there are, interestingly, down here, I mentioned there's kind of like a high and ultra sensitivity settings. Um, for the most part, when I was listening on the K5, I was fine with the high sensitivity, which the, the distinction why you would knock it down is that, that at high, this is reducing your max audio output by 12 decibels at ultra setting, it's reducing it by 24 decibels. So it's gonna require more power from your device the, the higher you, 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 you set that setting. But even at just the normal high level, I found it completely solved the, the noise floor issues that I had, which was honestly kind of a, kind of a cool relief. Um, and then because that was solving, you know, it was reducing the max output of something like the hip DAC, that meant that, you know, where I would have normally been encountering, let's say, channel imbalances at like, let's say, zero to 5% volume, which is kind of my operating range with something like the K5. When I have this thing plugged in, it's reducing the max output by 12 decibels. So at zero to 5%, it's now much quieter. So now I can take this thing up to like 10 to 15% volume levels to listen to on the K5, and it gets past those volume or those channel imbalances here on the hip deck. So solved problem number two. Now problem number three of output impedance, that's where I'm gonna get a little bit, I'm gonna get a little bit nerdy and a little bit sciencey. I'm gonna go over here to a frequency response graph. So what we're looking at right now, this is a frequency, it's just kind of like the stock graph of the MAGA OC K5. This is what it looks like when played out of something with a low output impedance, like an Apple dongle, which is actually what I measured it on. But you can see that's what the frequency response is. And if I add 15 ohms of impedance to my chain using one of these uh, impedance adapters, this green line is the result. You can see like how drastically it changes the frequency response by increasing that output impedance. Now, this does not happen with every earphone out there. Um, it's really it's really dependent on the earphone itself. It seems to most commonly affect balanced armature sets and especially in a negative way for multi-balanced armature sets. but this is kind of an example where you took an earphone that sounded relatively neutral, a little bit bright in the treble, and really just boosted kind of everything below 1000 hertz. Or you could say it very much attenuated everything above 1000 hertz, which will have the effect of essentially making the MAGA OC K5 sound underwater. It sounds terrible like this. Um, so this is, and this is only with 15 ohms of impedance, right? So if I have this K5 plugged into one of these Zeeshan players that have 100 ohms of output impedance, you can imagine that this effect is even worse, and it is. I've listened to it. Um, so yeah, that was that is kind of like the illustration of the problem of high output impedance on a sensitive IEM. And again, 
The Mago OCK5 is my test example here. The Campfire Andromeda is a really common, uh, really commonly cited IEM out there that has similar issues. And does the iFi IE Match Plus solve that? So what I've got down here are some uh, measures of the I, of this same setup. Basically, still had the the Mago OCK5 plugged into the high output impedance source, but in between them. I put the IE match. Let me see if I can demonstrate this for you. So essentially the way that I measured this was I had, you know, this down here simulating a high output impedance source. And then I had the IE match in between. So this would be kind of the effect, the same effect of just plugging this thing directly into your high output impedance source. And what we get with that is, let me go ahead and reveal this other graph. So this red graph is going to be what we got with the IE match. And you can see that the red graph is now much closer to the original blue graph. Uh, we got back everything above 1000 hertz that was being attenuated by uh, that excessively high output impedance. Um, and, you know, essentially brought the base back in line with where it was or where it should have been. Um, that is with it on the high setting, by the way. I did also test it with the, the IE match on this ultra setting, which I'll show here. And that actually did it even a little bit better. You can see that above 1000 Hertz, our line almost looks identical to what it looked like before, um, before, before putting the, the high output impedance or the high impedance in the middle of this whole chain. And so, I don't know, this might sound really nerdy uh, and, and maybe it's not clear what the implications are, but basically it means Using the IE match, I can listen to a source like this with the MAGA OCK5 and not worry about output impedance changing the frequency response. And I think that's pretty cool. So ultimately, of the three things that I was interested in, in the IE match solving, it addressed all of them and honestly, in a pretty surprisingly effective way. There's no battery to charge or anything on this, it just plugs in. Um, it does have the added the added dongleness to it, which is a bit of a downside. But ultimately, you know, if you've got one of those three problems and you're interested in solving it for your IEMs, I do think that the IE match does the trick. Now, did it bring back two bits of audio quality? I don't know. I, I'm not going to back up that claim. I have no idea how to back up that claim. And I'll say that the differences in the output impedance there or the impedance and, and, and how that was affecting the frequency response that was very audible is it bringing back two bits of audio i don't know about that um, i would not necessarily get this just planning to improve the general sound of your 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 setup but if you've got one of those three problems you've got excessive hiss excessive noise floor from your source you've got an oversensitive volume dial or you've got an output impedance that you think is messing with the frequency response of your earphone, I do think the IE match solve those. Now, I'm not gonna give this item a score. Like, I don't really know how to score a, a product like the IE match. I, it does the job. So I'll give it a, I'll give it, I'll give it a, a recommendation. Um, but yeah, that is my review of the iFi IE match. If you're interested in checking this thing out, I do have a link in the description down below. And while you're down there, if you found this video helpful, informative, or if it wasn't confusing, please do hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, ding the YouTube bell, and then I'll catch you in the next super review. And if you're here live, stick around, let's have a chat. All right, folks, let me catch up with live chat as best as possible. How are we doing Monday? evening it's almost evening 4:59 here in one minute i can call it an evening uh the early shout outs cheeb's big boss how's it going nice to see you rob hog good to see you as well uh acd burn 2000 saying i keep reviewing things that you were that you were just looking at interesting okay maybe maybe i'm spying on you or Perhaps we're just both into IEMs. Dimitro Alvarez saying, hi, The Cure. Yes, the, cu the Cure. Yeah, the good band, good band. Marco Thomas saying, same dude, I literally just bought this after DMS's video telling me it will give me more volume range on desktop amps, which it totally does. Jeremy Kiros, hey, nice to see you again. 
Meek Osme, nice to see you as well. Ishan, what's up? Always good to see you. Gunner Jones, again, how you doing? Uh, non Min saying, whoa, 50 bucks. I'm curious, does 50 bucks sound like a lot or a little for a device like this? Here's what I, I know about this. Um, iFi actually does have a cheaper version of the IE Match. I think they call it something different. And it just looks like it's maybe a little bit more plastic. I didn't talk about this too much, but the, the build quality on this is pretty nice. Like this is kind of just like a, a an aluminum metal shell. It's fairly hefty. It's got a nice, you know, audio file looking cable there. Um, so it's built well and 50 bucks, it does seem a little bit pricey, but I guess if you're throwing it on something like Campfire Andromeda, a thousand dollar earphone, what's an extra 50 bucks? Planet J saying, hi, Mark. Uh, first live chat I've caught, sitting at work, listening, mid-morning in Australia. Well, good morning. Um, yeah, glad you can make it. And uh, hope, hopefully hopefully, folks at work aren't, uh, are giving, giving you bad looks for watching videos about output impedance in the morning. What's up, Susie Vaughn? Uh, Non-men saying 50 bucks could get you a piggyback deck, which is true. So... And this kind of gets to, I don't know, think about what you're trying to solve with a product like the IE Match, right? If you're just trying to get your headphones to sound good or your the, the headphone port on your smartphone to sound good, swapping to something like an Apple dongle will probably get you the exact same, um, the exact same result. Uh, and that's only like nine bucks. So maybe this isn't the best solution in that case, but if you are, you know, using sources, you know, that are a little bit more powerful, like the iFi hip deck, maybe you're using a desktop amp and you want to use your sensitive IMs on that. Maybe you're playing around with some fun players like the Zeeshan stuff. That's where I think, at least to me, a product like the IE Match makes a lot of sense. Jeremy Kira saying the uh, earplugs are how you achieve no hits. Yes. You could ostensibly, you could hook this thing up to your earphones, plug it into your smartphone, reduce the hiss, or you could just plug earphones or earplugs into your ears and knock out all sound entirely. That is a good point. Marco Thomas saying, for me, any DAC I've used has been way too loud at min volume, except for this Bluetooth DAC I have. And yeah, that's, I mean, it, depending on what you're using, that can be the case, right? If you're using sensitive IMs, like, we often are, you just don't have a lot of usable range of volume, especially if you're using them on, on something like a phone where you have 16 steps of volume. If volume step number one is too quiet and volume step number two is too loud, like what do you do about that? The, this thing could solve that problem, which is cool. Or, you know, maybe more to the point, if you're using a campfire Andromeda on a desktop amplifier that's got a big old knob you can twist you know, from uh, uh, let's say eight o'clock to, to six o'clock, basically do 270 degrees of rotation, but maybe on your sensitive IMs, you only have like three degrees of volume control. Using something like the, the IE match will give you more range, which is great. And Gunnar Jones saying they need a 4.4 millimeter one. They only make a three. So that's a good point. I wanted to talk about that. And I didn't talk about that in the review because uh, frankly, it's not a thing I was too interested in. But if you go down here, it's interesting that the IE match has actually got a four pole 3.5 millimeter connector. This is actually kind of rare. Uh, and then a switch here that lets you switch between balanced and single ended modes. A balanced 3.5 millimeter connector is pretty rare. There's not a lot of these, but this does technically support balanced. And I believe if I plugged in another balanced 3.5 there, I can have I can continue my chain. If you wanted to connect this to a 4.4 millimeter um, balanced output, I think, and that's you know something that the IE match or sorry the the hip DAC has 4.4 millimeter there. I imagine you could get uh, an adapter that would adapt this balance 3.5 millimeter to a balance 4.4 millimeter and then connect it to something like the hip deck. Um, but that would be a lot of dongles stacked on top of each other. So I understand why that is not especially appealing. They do make a 2.5 millimeter version of this, which might be a little more compatible 
with more sources without having to stack things. But um, it seemed like, it, and I didn't look too deep into this, but it seemed like the IE Match Plus, which is what I've got here, was not available in 2.5 millimeter, only the original IE Match. And maybe that's changed since I last looked, but I'm a single ended guy, so that wasn't a problem for me. Not men saying, would anyone be ready to disassemble this voodoo magic? Look, I, I don't understand electricity in general. Um, electronics and, 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 and that sort of stuff like is way, way over my head. So I'm not going to be the person to disassemble this and explain it to you, but I don't think it's, I'm sure it's not rocket science. I'm sure someone that understands this stuff could probably explain to you what's going on inside this device, but I'm unfortunately not going to be the person to do that. Rob Hawk asking, did I try it on the Can N3 Pro? And no, I didn't. Um, I'm trying to recall. I don't recall the, N the N3 Pro being particularly hissy or noisy. Um, I, I know the, the N3 Pro does have the tube amplifiers, which can potentially create some, generate some additional noise, but nothing when I was using the N3 Pro ever really stood out to me about um, noise floor or any, any stuff like that. This was really the one that I wanted to test, uh, which is also a tube amplifier, but probably has, that's probably the last thing that it has in common with the N3 Pro. Kawaii Koto saying, I bought these and paired them with an iFi Zendak and Empire Air Zeus, and they became dark AF and way too smooth. So that's interesting. Um, again, the main thing I tested these things with was the Mago OCK5, which we saw what the, the frequency response, what happens to the frequency response kind of before and after when using it on the high output impedance things. I didn't, I didn't really try this with things that, hmm, I'm trying to think what, what could possibly account for the experience that you're describing. Um, I mean, it's possible that the, the output impedance of your device was making the, 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 you said the Empire Air Zeus, maybe it was making your Zeus brighter, which is what sometimes high output impedance can do. I just showed in the, this example of the K5, um, that high output impedance. So let's go back to, let's go back to demonstrating that here. So that's the green line here with the K5 increasing the output impedance very much does the opposite. It darkens the sound, but that's not always the case. If I were to take a high, take one of these output impedance or these impedance adapters and put it on something like a single balance armature set, let's say the Edemotic ER4, it would have the effect of brightening it. And so it's very possible, I'm not saying this is what's happening, but it's very possible that your source is actually uh, imparting, uh, it's changing the sound signature of the Empire Air Zeus that you're listening to and that the IE match is actually correcting it. It's possible. I don't know that that's what's happening, um, but that's the only thing I can really think of based on my experiences with this device. ACD Burn saying 50 bucks seems fine for protecting my ears from getting murdered if I accidentally plug an IM into a desktop amp. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you can still murder your ears uh, by accidentally plugging it. If I plug this K5 into my amp right now, at the setting it's at right now for my HD600s, it would hurt. If I listened to it, if I had this thing in the middle of it, it would probably hurt less, but it's still not going to be that comfortable. Joseph Mursky asking, does changing the stock IM cable even make a difference? I just got the Blessing 2 Dusk, and I'm wondering if you would recommend changing the cable um, of one to a higher quality or keeping the original. For the most part, for the most part, no. Like most cables, so 
the only the only way that I've experienced cables changing the sound of an IEM is if they actually have, you know, they're changing the impedance. Most cables are going to have impedance ratings somewhere between like zero to a half an ohm. And I haven't listened to an earphone that's sensitive enough that zero to a half an ohm really makes a difference. It's possible if you're listening on something like a Campfire Andromeda, maybe half an ohm of impedance would be pretty audible. Um, but for the most part, I don't think you really need to worry about that. And the Blessing 2 that you asked about is an example of an IEM that I don't think is sensitive enough to pick up the differences between most cables. Like you would have to have a cable. This, this right here is 15 ohms of impedance, right? No, this one's 17, 75. Here, this one's 50, 15 ohms of impedance. You throw this onto a Blessing 2, you'll probably hear the difference. That's pretty audible, but the cables are just nowhere near that level of impedance unless something is really, really wrong or really right in the case of like Edemotic made a cable with intentionally put, I think 75 ohms of impedance into the cable to intentionally alter the frequency response of one of their ER4 headphones. Um, so that's an example of where a cable can change your sound, but for the vast majority of cases out there, you just, I, I don't, I don't think you should worry about it. Gunnar Jones saying the N3 Pro, the can, talking about a different digital audio player. Um, and the Andromeda is nowhere near as bad as the M3X. I think that's a Shanling player for Hiss. Interesting. Yeah, I think in general, I've noticed that, um, I don't think it's 4.4 millimeters in specific, but balanced outputs tend to have more Hiss than unbalanced outputs. Um, at least, you know, that's the case with something here like the, the hip deck. And it's basically because you're, you've got double the amp uh, power going into it. And by doubling up your amps, you're effectively doubling up the noise floor. Part of the reason why I don't really care about balanced outputs, if I'm honest. Uh, Alex asking, I think an important question, and we touched on this a little bit earlier. So if you want a little bit more detail, I'll go back, but Alex is asking, how does this product compare to something like a 300 ohm impedance adapter, which uh, is what we've got here. This is, you know, we've got 75 ohms plus 36 ohms plus 15 ohms in total. This is like 120 something ohms of impedance. This is, you know, is kind of a stand in for what you're asking about. There are, you know, a 300 ohm impedance adapter that you could plug into a lot of these devices and effectively cut out that hiss that we were talking about. But with a, a sensitive IEM like the, 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 the MAGA OC here, by increasing the impedance, you're actually going to be pretty significantly changing the frequency response. And that was what we demonstrated over here. This is what the MAGA OC K5 looks like uh, stock. Let me, let me, there you go. That's the stock frequency response of the K5. And then this is what it looks like with 15 ohms of impedance added. You can imagine if I added 300 ohms of impedance, it's going to really drastically change the frequency response and probably not for the best, um, if I'm perfectly honest. So that's that's the big difference, right? These things are cheap, simple. They'll do the trick. And for, you know, if you got hiss on like, I don't know, a, a cost KSC 75, you're probably not going to be doing damage to the frequency response by using a high output, a high impedance adapter. But if you're listening on an earphone that's got balanced armatures, especially, you probably are. Hopefully that answered your question. Planet J's appreciate the, uh, the clarification. No one's it's just, it's just between you and me in Australia. Uh, Recode asking, what if I use the IE match to connect my IEMs to a tube amp? Um, the the only tube amp that I connected them to was this one. This has a tube amplifier built into it. I do also have uh, a Shit Valley 2 over here, which is technically a tube amp, but usually actually pretty good with IEMs. Um, and I did have another tube amp. I had a dark voice connected uh, a bit ago, but I didn't actually test the IE match there. Based on my experience with the, the this player right here, I think you'll be fine. I think like 
Um, you know, tube amplifiers are a good example of a source that probably has a, a fairly high output impedance because they're not made for sensitive IEMs. Um, but I think using a product like the IE Match will make it so that it will be perfectly compatible. Joe S saying, I like your suggestion for the Apple dongle. Nine bucks gets you all the power you need for most IEMs. I think the only DAC that has hiss that I own is the ES100, uh, but turning analog gain down fixes that. Yeah, that sounds about right. The ES100 being a, a Bluetooth external um, DAC and amplifier, it does have a little bit of hiss. Uh, and yeah, I guess if you use more of the I would just set like the digital volume control on your phone to max um, and then you should be able to gain a little bit of range on the on the ES100 before you encounter that hiss. And to be honest, like for the most part, most of the times I'm not I'm not super sensitive to hiss. I just reached over here and grabbed this is a Sony NWA105 Walkman. Um, sensitive IMs, this thing will pick up some some uh, uh, noise floor and certain people might be pretty annoyed by that, but it's low enough that it doesn't really bother me. Um, the IE match could solve that, but this is not a good example of where I would employ a product like the IE match. I think the Z Shan players and the, the hip DAC are much stronger examples of where having a product like the IE match with a sensitive IEM is kind of a must, or I just don't want to use the IEM on those devices. Um, I'm not going to be able to pronounce this name. I don't think eight Elton. I'm going to stop right there, but you're saying, uh, I use 200 ohm impedance plug for ear protection and I have more volume range. It completely changed the sound of my KB at K bear F1. If that's got a balanced armature in it, that's probably why. Um, but not on the tin hi-fi P1 and the blonde BL03. So I was confused. Yeah. I mean, the... I'm going to guess, that I'm not familiar with the k -Bear F1, but I'm going to guess that that is a balanced armature and that would exactly explain it. it it's going to make your BA stuff sound pretty weird. With a single balanced armature, I believe increasing the output impedance or the impedance um, is going to be pretty predictable. What it's going to do is it's going to reduce the bass and increase everything above 1000 hertz. So it's kind of going to do like the uh, counterclockwise um, effect on your frequency response. So it's going to make your earphone sound brighter, less bassy. When you're working with a multi-balanced armature set, like I've got here with the, the Mago CK5, the result that I've noticed is much more, much less predictable. Um, yeah, here it just, it causes chaos. It sounds terrible. Jonathan Lerner asking which full size headphones are in my daily rotation. I mean, the Sennheiser HD 600 is kind of my, my fallback go-to. Yeah, that's the one, that's the one that I like the most. Um, if I'm sitting at, you know, on my couch and I bring a headphone with me, a lot of the times I'll bring my modded Sennheiser HD 58X just because I've got a nice short cable on it. And I don't know, I'm less worried about less just worried, worried about wear and tear on that one than I am versus my 600. But lately, here and grab this. Lately, I've been listening to this. This is a Sendi Iva, and I am planning to do a review of this in the coming weeks, so stay tuned. But yeah, lately, it's been the Sendi Iva, the HD 600, or the 58X if I'm not at my desk. Big Boss saying, the Estellan Kern SR25 actually has 1.6 ohms of impedance out of the balanced and 1.88 ohms of impedance out of the single ended whack. That is, that's pretty high for a hi-fi audio player, honestly. I would expect most sources, most hi-fi sources, um, especially if they're made for portable use, I would expect them to have output impedances under one ohm. Um, you know, maybe, 
1.5, that's, that is surprising, to be honest. Um, and that's high enough that you would, you would probably hear that difference with a sensitive IM. For most things, it's probably not gonna make a difference, if I'm perfectly honest, but something like the K5 could probably pick up that difference. And something like the Campfire Andromeda would definitely pick it up. Steven Duro saying you ordered the FH3 on my recommendation and you used the link in my video. Hope that helps you out. It does actually, I appreciate that. You don't have to do that, but when you do, I appreciate it. Samurai Guy saying just finished the review part of the stream, so sorry if I already talked about it, but iFi has an ear buddy that says it removes 12 decibels but does not support mic or balance. Yeah, I think the I think the ear buddy, and I'm not super familiar with iFi's lineup, but I know that they have a cheaper version of uh, this product that looks like it's all plastic, a little bit orange maybe. Um, I think that might be what you're referring to. And from what I understand, it does the same things. It just doesn't have some of the features like the switchable sensitivity uh, and it's not made out of metal like this one is. Scott Pleasure, it's cool if you missed it. Good to see you. Joe S saying, ooh, Sendy Iva, nice. I've got the Monolith M M570 with the same driver. I love the sub bass extension, but the Monoliths have planar ringing at 800 hertz. Interesting. I still love them though, planar ringing. I don't think that's a phenomenon I'm familiar with. I'm gonna have to look into that. But yeah, the, the, Iva, the Ivas. Um, if, I, I'll be honest, I'm not like super caught up on all of, all of the lore, the, the, the Sendi Iva lore, but basically there's a number of headphones that, out there that appear to use the exact same driver as this. Some of them are even cheaper than the Iva. The, the monolith might be an example of that. I'm not familiar with that one. Um, so I, this is the only one I've heard. I'm not going to be able to compare it to those, but I will be comparing it to things like the, the Heifeman Sandara. And of course the Sennheiser HD 600s. Uh, but yeah, folks, I think that's going to do it for this video. Um, appreciate y'all hanging out, having a chat. And if you found this video helpful, like always, please do hit the like button. It really does help me out. Uh, subscribe to the channel. If you're not already, you are. Ding the YouTube bell and I'll catch you on the next super review. And if you want to chat in between now and then, check out the link to the Discord server in the description down below. Otherwise, I'll catch you probably later this week. All right, have a good one.